I'm like, girl, this boy just tried to rape me. <laughs> oh my gosh. The edible hit me and something was telling me, take off all your clothes and run. Run in the road. Y'all, the enemy ain't gonna like this. The enemy is not gonna like this one. The enemy is not gonna like this one. So, first off, let me just make a few. First of all, ignore this. I really wanted to wear this outfit. And I don't have no iron, so yeah, let's just pretend like they're just flat. Let me tell y'all, I've been, I hope y'all can hear me because the everybody, all of a sudden, my community want to cut grass. Look what time it is. It's 1.38. Don't grass usually get cut in the morning. <sighs> Hopefully y'all can hear me, but let me tell y'all, and I know I'm going to have cotton mouth after this video. Like this testimony is long overdue, long overdue. I even made my bed for y'all. I even made my bed for y'all because I promise y'all this cover was bunched up <laughs> in front of the bed. This cover was definitely bunched up. But, okay. I've been prolonging this testimony for a long, 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 long time. I don't know. i just been running from the testimony. And it's crazy to me because I can post my testimony on Instagram. I can tell my testimony to people at church. I can tell my testimony to people on a Zoom call, Bible study. But it's something about me sitting in front of this camera and really going into depth about my testimony that just scared me. Like, my heart was in my butt when God literally used somebody this morning to ask me, when are you going to post this testimony? Like, it been on my heart very heavily. And, or very heavy. And... Every time I get ready to record, every time recording day approaches, something happens. I get spiritually attacked. All of a sudden, I don't know who I am. And just something happens that, you know, it ain't even God's plan. Um, I'm just ready to get this testimony off my chest. I'm ready to be done. I feel like this testimony is going to bring me breakthrough. I feel like I'm going to be rejoicing after I edit and post this video in Jesus' name. And... I just know that what I'm doing is going to, I just know that my testimony is going to save so many lives. Like, I know so many lives are attached to my testimony and me prolonging it is killing these people. And I don't want no blood to be on my hands. So I'm going to obey today in Jesus' name. This testimony will be recorded with no issues in Jesus' name. This testimony will be uploaded on time in Jesus' name. This testimony will be, I won't have any distractions while recording this video in Jesus' name. Lord, let your will be done, Father God. I rebuke, I, re I rebuke, see, look. Ah, 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 ah. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus says you are mine. I rebuke any distraction. I rebuke any tongue tied. I pray that everything will flow. Everything will be good. I am fine. I will be recording. I am alive and I am okay in Jesus name. Like I have, I have to say all of these things because when I tell you like this is so hard for me, I really don't know. And if you see me looking down or to the side or just like looking up thinking like ignore it. Cause first of all, I'm nervous. Um, that's how I remember things. Look, I'm doing it already. And yeah, just bear with me. Um, I pray this testimony will speak to whoever is watching this. I pray this testimony will reach all the people that need this testimony. And I pray that it will speak to you. I don't know if I already said that. And I'm nervous. Can't you tell? Um, but um, what else am I missing? Uh, this grass people need to stop for real. I'm really excited. And I look cute. So yeah. Um, where should I start? Father, let your will be done. I'm not nervous. I'm fine. Um, the devil cannot get me. The devil cannot get me. So first, I wrote a bunch of, y'all won't be able to see it. I'm not going to focus it. But I wrote a whole bunch of testimony points. Let me make sure my nail ain't dirty either because I just got done doing my makeup. So if it's dirty, I'm sorry. But I wrote all my testimony points on my phone. So that's why I'm going to be looking at my phone. I saw my testimony so many times in like so many different orders so um when i wrote these points down i wrote them as the holy spirit gave them to me they're not in order so i'm gonna try my best to put them in the exact order um that they occurred so first i'm gonna start off when i was in middle school no high was i in middle school i'm sorry y'all i promise this testimony is true it's just this is my first time really telling it in detail so I'm gonna start off when I, this is a lot. 
ah this is a lot i just hate going back to my past and thinking about it i know that's no i know that i'm no longer that person i know that god delivered me from all those things but it's just like going back and like actually putting my plate putting myself in that place that just brings me to tears i don't know it, i just went through a lot in my life and i'm just really happy to be here and that god delivered me from all those things and yeah so we're gonna start off when I was about 13, 14. This is when I started like sneaking out the house and becoming unruly and being disrespectful to my mom and feeling like I'm alone and misunderstood and all these things. Um, my farthest memory of like, or my farthest thought of, how should I say this? Um, Y'all, please bear with me, this is a lot. Um, as far as I can remember, to me, um, I can't believe I'm like stuttering up already. Like, relax, relax, it's not that serious. But in the beginning of time, I remember just like having father issues. Like, I didn't know who my dad was. I knew, well, I knew who my dad was, but I didn't have no relationship with him. Like, we barely spoke. I had to keep re meeting him over and over. Like, I would re meet him like every other year or every year. And I just didn't know who he was. And I really desired, like I had a longing for a father figure. And I just felt like, no. Mm -mm. I never cried about telling this part of the testimony. I am, first of all, God already restored our relationship. I don't know why it's even, you know, that's crazy. Oh no. Mm -mm, this is ghetto stop i don't want makeup to be messed up okay i'm glad i wore makeup because i don't want it to be messed up and that's gonna prevent me from crying oh lord Ooh, telling my truth okay we ain't we ain't and then the the, the, the grass sounds is a paid actor so i didn't really have a father figure and i had a stepdad at the time but I never really grew close to my stepfathers. I have I had two stepfathers in my whole entire lifetime. Um, I have no memories with my mom and my dad being together. Uh, when I was two years old, my sister was born and her dad was my stepfather. That was the only father figure besides my grandfather that I really had. But I had like this longing desire to know my father. And my mom would just be like, I don't know why you keep trying to reach out to him. Like, I would literally be trying to reach out to gain that relationship, to grow that relationship. And, like, he was young. My parents had me very young. This is going to be all over the place, y'all. And I might just fidget a little, but it's okay. The story is going to get out. Um, my parents had me very young. My mom had me at 17 or 18, and my dad was 19 or 18. And so my mom was pregnant, pregnant with me as a senior in high school in Dade County and i have no memories i i've never seen my mom and father together and that's that's common in the united states or in the world <laughs> and i don't know why it just like bothered me and girl we, come on 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 chill 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 yeah it's the reason why the enemy didn't want me to record the testimony. I can already feel like the healing in me just talking about this. Like I wrote about it. I've talked about it in like portions and pieces, but I never like told the full story or like heard me say it out loud. And like, I already feel like a breakthrough coming. But my youngest memory, like I said, this is gonna be all over the place, I'm sorry. My youngest memory was two years old. Um, and my mom, her water broke and she was gonna give birth to my little sister, Shania. And I remember the day like yesterday, like I said, it's my last memory. And I felt sad that my mom was having another child. And that's like any other older sibling, like I just felt like I didn't have my mom's full attention. And Ooh, this is ghetto. 
And y'all probably will, you know, say like, that's normal. I tell myself like, it's normal to feel like that as the firstborn. And can y'all stop? Hold on. It's a little bit quieter. He, he done moved a little bit down and my battery died so that gave me enough time to get myself together. Yeah, so when my mom water broke, I remember like she threw up on me. I went to the bathroom sink and I'm looking in the mirror like, well, my mom having another baby. I don't even get enough of her attention. Like how is she having another, another baby? I didn't ask for this when in reality, I remember asking. Also, I mean, maybe that's my youngest memory. I remember asking for a sibling at my grandma's house in Miami. But I was just like, uh. so then my sister came and then I don't really remember much. I don't even remember my other sister after her who came two years later. We all two years apart. I don't even remember her coming, but I just remember just like feeling like I need to do things for my mom's attention. Like I feel like I didn't, I didn't get enough attention at home, which caused me to do a lot of attention seeking things as you will see later on in this testimony. So back to me and my father's relationship so i never had a relationship with my father um i really thought he was like my uncle or something because i remember my grandma was like who's him and i'm like <laughs> i didn't know who he was and later on my father he kept it real with me i think last year he was like listen i was young and like i was running from my responsibility i didn't want no kids right now and when i was a plan baby like my mom and my father literally said like you want to have a baby all right bet. and then they had me and i guess when i officially came he he went to jail when my mom had my baby shower and then i think by the time i was born he was here i think i don't know but he was not ready to have a child and that's i know that's understandable it it don't i'm not like you know saying it's okay but i understand him now that i'm older especially seeing people my age have kids i'm 21 years old oh first of all let me introduce myself i'm all over the place i'm so sorry so my name is delia my social media handles are india kayor that's my brand name um many people know me as india kayor um <laughs> i laugh because i don't like the name india but i already made it a brand so i can't really change it and the reason why i don't like the name india is because it's i feel like it's the india is uh what i used to call it there's a big difference between india and delia to know me you will know like the persona that india has on social media i don't really know how to explain it but i'm not gonna even get too deep in that but i feel like in, i'm gonna just say i'm gonna just say because i'm rambling too much i'm gonna just say india is the person that i was before i got saved but i already made it a brand and so yeah that's just still my instagram name but my name is Delia. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Broward County, Florida. I'm Haitian and Jamaican, and I am a lover of Christ. I am God's child. I'm a woman of God, and God has called me to his kingdom and called me to serve. So this is why I'm here today. Um, okay, so back to the story. That's that with my father. So then fast forward to when I was in ninth grade. I, I lost my virginity in ninth grade. And from there, all hell broke loose. Like, I just started doing the craziest things. Okay, so I'm gonna start in elementary school before I lost my virginity. So, in elementary, I remember me just being a bully. Like, I would just bully people for no reason. And even yesterday, like sometimes the memory would just come back to me because I would have dreams of me like just bullying people. And I know that's the enemy trying to delay me. I know that's a delaying spirit because I'm delivered from those things. And if God has forgiven me and forgot my sins, why do they keep popping up in my dreams? I know that is not of God. But I just have so many vivid um, memories of me bullying people, kids. And I remember me just being an evil little girl. Like... I used to just do the craziest things and say the craziest things. And I really, I'm still trying to figure out where all of that came from and where that stemmed from. But I was a bully in elementary and I was a people pleaser. Um, I remember one time like in a the neighborhood, um, these people was being mean to my sister and I tag teamed my sister with people in a neighborhood. Like what? Like... 
I've asked my sister for forgiveness. She's like, girl, we was kids. Girl, you got me laughing so hard. I ain't, I'm not even thinking about that. But I don't know, it just hurt me so bad. Like me as a big sister, I should be like a protector. And there's been moments where I protected my sister. You know, I wasn't just flat out like green. But there's been times where like I wanted attention and people to like me so bad to the point where I even like diss my sister. That hurt, that hurts my heart. Like I, if you know me, I love my siblings and I'm not going to cry. I've cried about it plenty of times and beat myself up about it plenty of times. There's been times where I bullied somebody and then when we got called to the, when I got called to the principal office, I blamed it on my sister. And I used to lie real good. So my mom will always believe me. Um, there's times I even bullied my little sister. Like I made her eat deodorant. Like I feel like I was a terrible bad sister. I used to bully my middle sister. Oh, now I see where it's stemming from. I used to bully the one that's after me and like be buddy buddy with the one that's after her. And I know that came from a little hatred from when I was a little girl and she came and I just felt like she took my mom she took my she took my mom attention and I would just do cruel things <laughs> like I used to have competitions with her like I wanted to always be cleaner than her so if I see her going to the bathroom I would run to the bathroom so I could take a shower first and I'd be like oh I took a shower first like it was always a competition with her in the whole time mm. Lord Oh my gosh, this one really hurt me because I love my siblings. Oh, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I really love my sisters. Oh, but I used to be very evil. Oh, child, relax. I didn't plan. I really did not plan to share like this. But I, the Holy Spirit is leading me right now. I don't know who this is going to say, but I'm going to just keep it real. I was very evil. I used to have evil thoughts. And even when my little brother came, it got even worse. Because that was my mom's first boy. And she wanted her first child to be a boy. She said she had a boy. She wouldn't have, she wouldn't have had other kids. Like, she was trying for a boy. So, she had three girls. And then my brother is her last child. When my brother came, I was, I was angry. Because now she got her son. Now it's my son, my son, my son. Y'all know how mothers be with their son. Now, it wasn't, like, major. Like, I, I'm going to keep it real. My mom, she, I don't feel like she showed favoritism. Everybody get their own special treatment. Like, or not special, but everybody got treated equally. She did for all of us. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I felt like she really vouched for me as a first child. Like, she really did, like, you know, her little one with treating me as a first child um i don't know how to explain it but the first child always gonna have that special place in their parents heart and i never lost that place although at times i did feel like it but yes i was a bully and i don't know why um clearly looking back now i just was seeking attention or i just wasn't getting the necessary attention from my mom at home and yeah i believe a lot of kids so that's that's that we just got that we got that out of the way lord that's only that's a little little piece and i'm already crying i'm sorry y'all so we're gonna go ahead and put a check on that part <laughs> we got two points down a million to go this next part is gonna be very hard too we're just gonna get this out of the way and then after that it shouldn't be so bad but i remember vine days and i had a vine account and i was probably in middle school well, I was in middle school. I wasn't in high school yet. And that's when I had my first encounter with corn. You know? And I seen some on my timeline. And I was just like, me as a kid, I'm just like, what's this? Like, I was so interested in it. And, like, I would be searching on Vine for corn. And I was just, yeah, interested in it. And... That's when I started watching like girl girl corn. I'm not trying to get my video restricted. I don't know. All my life until until I stopped watching corn, it was always girl girl girl. So there was a point in my life where I thought I was bye. Bye. Hopefully y'all could put two and two. Because I was just always interested in girls. And this is so bad. I hate these memories. I don't know how to say 
this but i would watch girl girl and i remember one day it was so bad to the point where it wasn't bad bad but i don't know but i remember one day i put it on a laptop and i gathered my two sisters and i'm like y'all come watch this and me now that i think about it like clearly i was a child and this is so uncomfortable to say but yeah like i had them watch girl girl or was it girl girl it was something negative it was it was something sexual something provocative on youtube and you know back then youtube restrictions wasn't that crazy so it was a little bit of you know stuff on youtube back then and i had them you know watch it and i pray to god that i didn't plant any seed in them that was the enemy that day i'm telling you i was no more than 10 years old that was the enemy i was literally probably like eight and i remember like my mom came home and i couldn't even get off the computer and she came and she was like Dalea! and i got in trouble for that she told my father my father laughed it off and he really he didn't really say nothing he was just like oh so he was he didn't really say nothing about it so being that i got like a tap on my wrist like i just kept watching it and that was the time i'm so sorry this is all over the place and i know i keep apologizing i'm over apologetic right now because i don't want y'all to get annoyed but yeah so that was the time that seed was planted in me and that's when i started thinking i was bi but i'm not never was um because i never did anything with no girl for real and then i remember like memories of me like being a little grown with little kids like i remember my first time first and only time like playing with a girl in that way i was probably like nine and i had a babysitter and she had a daughter and i remember the daughter like she was on it and i don't know how this even came about but we was like kissing and like touching each other and i remember my mom busting the door hey what y'all when i said that girl got to whoop it her life and then I think we never went back over there again. And then I remember just like being so curious about other body parts and like stuff like that. I remember like having a memory of somebody who's my cousin, but not really my cousin. Like we should just be under the covers, just kissing snotty noses and just like touching each other's body parts. I remember that. But uh, nothing major. Well, let me not even say nothing major. That's major but nothing like as far as penetration so i'm just glad that's out of the way that was just so uncomfortable to say i used to be playing house a lot with my husband my husband <laughs> what i used to be playing house a lot with my siblings like kissing my sister in the mouth and doing all this crazy stuff but that's a lot of people have a memory of that that that, that don't mean that's so that it's okay but i'm not gonna beat myself up too much about that that's just I guess I was just curious. We was just curious as kids. And yeah. I feel like that had a strong. Those memories had a strong hold on me. Because a little bit of me knew better. But I also was just not mature enough to know what I was doing. Like I was just curious. Kids are curious. And yeah that was that. So then I'm going to fast forward to me losing my virginity. I lost my virginity to this boy. And yeah, it was like any typical virginity losing. <laughs> I don't know. And um, I remember fast forward, I became friends with this girl. And she was fast. She was real fast. And it's crazy because when I was in eighth grade or seventh grade, all my friends was doing a do. <laughs> the girls was fast back then. Um, even losing your virginity at 14 is fast. Way too fast. I beat my sister if I ever, if I ever, thank God they're so innocent. Thank God I was the only one of my mom's kids that was unruly and bad and fast. Because they learn from my mistakes. And they're so innocent. I hope they still are. Um, I met this girl, like I said, I was like, 14 because i was in ninth grade her boyfriend was i in ninth grade yeah i was in ninth grade i was a freshman her boyfriend at the time was like 20 something he was grown that's that's so sad he was grown um 
they introduced me to weed i snuck out the house one night and that was a thing of mine i used to be sneaking out the house like out the window and i didn't care if my neighbor that was directly across from us was on his porch <laughs> haste her mind your business i'm finna head out and i'll be back and don't don't go in my house in this window i know this window is open but don't mean that don't mean rob me i used to be sneaking out with no no shame no shame at all sometimes i make a fake body in the bed with a whole bunch of clothes and yeah i'd just be sneaking out and i'll go that was my time like i used to be outside like riding around lord knows what could happen to me thank god nothing never happened to me and i used to be riding around with different men like i'm from broward county like if you know you know if we had a, a background like mine a testimony like mine you know we'll smoke I, I, but like i said i'm getting beside myself let me start going to order so i snuck out and i had smoke with them and i remember my first time smoking vividly like i seen stars and then I don't know if I actually heard this, but I could have sworn I heard this when I got high. I seen her boyfriend, so it was a two man. Oh lord, she had her boyfriend, and the boyfriend homeboy was there, and we all smoked. And I seen like the homeboy and her boyfriend like huddled up talking, like whispering. I could have sworn I heard him say like he was going. Like what? What? What he planned to do with us? Like, so I'm like, you think you slick? You think you slick? I heard what you said. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something like about having with us. And I was like, you think you slick? You think you slick? And they was like, chill, chill. And my friend, my homegirl, looking at me like, girl, chill, chill. And I'm like, no, I'm not tripping. Like, I heard what y'all said, and. It seemed they made me seem like I was bugging out, and I probably was. But that's that's how you know weed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't even. I I don't know. But yeah, that was my first time smoking, and from there, like me and her used to just be partying, like wearing the skimpiest clothes, booty shorts, going out to these parties. Y'all know them little flowers I used to be on Instagram. I used to pull up. Um, I don't even know what they're called. But I used to just be there twerking, doing all this stuff. <laughs> Whole time I done slipped out the house. So that was my period. I, I guess that was like my phase. Um, and I was just out here wilding. Like once I had one body, I had five. And then I just kept counting. I was on two hands and I was just like, I don't care. Like, it don't matter. Like, once I passed one hand, I was just like, I don't really care. It's so sad to say. But, um, I would just be sneaking out and just be with different men. And then I eventually started talking to older, older, older men, like sugar daddies for money. Okay? And now I don't, I never sold my purr for money. But I would try to like finesse men. And this before the City Girls came out. <laughs> that ain't nothing to be proud about. But I don't know. I said it to say because I don't know what really influenced that. I don't know. I just was so money hungry. And I know that's of the devil. I remember just like talking to men and then like get money from them. And I would ghost them before. like Or when, or when they started to ask for some, I just would ghost them. I'm all over the place. Yeah, so I even, I had had this little boyfriend. And when I was in, I think I was a freshman, yeah, I had this little boyfriend. He was already graduated from my school, and he would come pick me up. It's so crazy, because I, I, I've i seen his page now. Oh, I skipped a part. So I remember, my this is when my innocence was first, like, when my innocence first vanished. I remember being in Jamaica, I was 12 years old, and it was this family friend who I thought was my cousin, um, one day I was on the couch. I was there for my 13th birthday. I, my mom don't even know this. I was there for my 13th birthday. I was only 12. And I was on the couch playing game. And he came in. At the time, this boy was 17 years old, I believe. He came in from this party. And he came and sat next to me and was, like, grooming me and, like, talking to me. And I remember him just going to the bathroom, coming back on and like he was pulling my arm telling me to come and i'm just like so 
so it's somebody laying on the floor in front of us so i'm texting in my phone and like showing him and i'm just like i'm a virgin and he's like it's okay da, da, da. and he brought me in his back room and made me suck yeah so i just now realized at this big age that i was is that sexual assault i don't know what that is but thank god it didn't go no further than that i never been raped or nothing like that he made me suck his and that was that um at the time i didn't feel no way about it i didn't really think nothing of it um, I didn't realize what really happened until like literally this month <laughs> and I, I mean I willingly did it so I didn't think it was nothing of that so yeah that was that um I'm sorry my energy is going down I didn't eat any breakfast I really want the Holy Spirit to operate through me and like I'm getting really discouraged as I tell this testimony because it's all over the place I had sugar daddies or whatever. And I remember time, I remember this old man picked me up from school one time. I was so scared to get in his car. I was so scared. I had my friend walk me to the car because I was so scared. My stomach was hurting me. I did not know this man from a can of paint. I met him off Instagram. Most of these men that I've been with, I met him off Instagram because I had no life outside of social media. My mama had me on lockdown. I ain't really go nowhere. And yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just just reflecting back um i remember this man picked me up and he was supposed to pay for my hair and he pulled over into these apartments and he was like i want you and this man is like 40 craters in his face just nasty looking and i'm just like i'm not ready yet but in my head i'm like i'm never linking up with this man again i am not and he sat there for a while and thank god he did not rape me or anything and he took me to get the hair and dropped me to my hair appointment and i blocked him and took a look back home um so those were my experiences with older men and i had more as i got older like the age of 19 but that will come as i keep going okay so now this is the catalyst in like my testimony so i was at school one day and i used to stay at the school and like just try to like hang out because like i said i had no life outside of social media and i was tired of just going to school go home go to school go home like i really wanted to be outside i guess and i sat to school one day a lot of my mom said that i was doing some after school program or after school sport when the whole time i was just sitting there wanted to hang out with everybody not get on the bus and this boy who was kind of popular at my school he had a girlfriend and everything. He came up to me and he was like, what's up? Da, da, da. And I was like, hey. And he was like, I forgot what he said, but I know that he left. And then I seen like a DM from him and he was like, you trying to smoke? And I'm like, yeah. Keep in mind, I just started smoking. So I'm fiending. Anybody who got smoke, I'm re anybody who got weed, I, I'm ready to, I don't care what it, what it is in the weed, I'm ready to smoke. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. And he was like, all right, I'm going to come get you. I'm going to clean my room. So this man takes forever to come back to the school and get me. But he finally gets me. He drives me to his home, which is close by the school. Um, I get out of the car. I see him going in the glove department to get the weed. And he, we get out, go to the door. And then he tells me to wait outside. And then he goes into the house to do I don't know what. He comes back and get me. I'm sitting out the door, sitting outside the door looking dummy, looking like a dummy. And he finally come get me. We go back inside the house and he brings me to this room that looks like a baby room. And I'm over here like, why would he tell me he got to clean his room if he's going to bring me in this room that's not his? But anyway, he closed the door and he was like, you know what time it is. I'm confused. Time to smoke? We put a smoke? He was like, you know what time it is. And he come, he all up in my face and I'm like, I'm confused because this man got a girlfriend. And first of all, I, I was so stupid because while i'm at somebody's house who has a girlfriend but i'm thinking like it's just innocent like he just cool i'm friendly as hell and i'm just thinking like we're just here to smoke it ain't nothing more you know because i'm really thinking this boy loyal to his girlfriend he was like you know what time it is i ain't come to play and tries to zip down my unbutton my jean jacket and i'm like what are you 
what are you doing? I'm like, you have a whole girlfriend who has a whole vagina. And he was like, so I'm sorry, my camera thing. Um, but he was like, stop bringing her up. Da -da 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 -da. And I was like, no, I'm confused. Like, I can't hear smoke. And then, like, he just persisted, continued to try to. I don't really know. This is a. I ain't talk about this one in a little minute. And he kept trying to unbutton my, my jean jacket. And I was like, do you know what you're doing? I was like, you know, this is rape. And he paused in his tracks. He got up. He left the room, locked me in the room, comes back, and he like, come on. And as I'm walking out, I see somebody on a couch, like a girl or something. I don't know when she got there. I don't I don't know if he stopped because they came home. I don't know what happened, but he drops me back to school and I only tell one girl about it. I'm like, girl, this boy just tried to rape me. And somehow it got out to the school and it was this big thing. Like everybody was talking about it. So I get called to the office or did I go to the office? I, I think I went to the office and I told them, the one of the administrators about it and she was like, we're gonna have to call your mom. So I'm over here like, oh no, we ain't calling my mama cause she don't even know that I was doing this. Like, no, we can't call my mama. Like forget, forget what I told you. It don't even matter. And she was like, yeah, it happened off school campus, so we're going to have to call your mom. They called my mom. My mom was like, what? My mom pulled up to the school so fast. So, so fast. And withdrew me from the school. So now, I'm in the office with my mom and the administrators. And they asked me questions like, where he live at? Who is him? And I know his I know his nickname. I didn't know his full name for real. But I knew his nick, nick, nickname and what he... Well, his nickname in school and what he looked like but i'm like telling them i don't really know they was like okay which where did he live i'm like i don't know they was like which way did you go when y'all was leaving the school left or right we went left but i said right i did not want this to be bigger than what it what it was i don't know what i don't know i don't know but i didn't want this to be a situation and um Eventually, I confessed on who it was, and now he's blowing up my phone. He blew up my phone. Ugh, they got to him real fast. <laughs> he blew up my phone up. I remember, like, getting home after the situation, and I'm like, Ma, he calling me. And she answered the phone, and she's like, hello? And he was like, hello? And she was like, this is her mom. Da -da -da -da. And he was like, ma'am, she lying. She lying. I did not touch that girl. She tried to come on to me. She tried to kiss me. And I, I promise y'all, I did not come on to this boy. He, he uh, forgive me. He, I'm not attracted to this man at all. He's not my type. Let me just say that. So for a fact, I knew it wasn't a situation where I led him on and didn't want to do it no more. It was not that. I literally genuinely only wanted to smoke and go back out of the yard. Go back out of school, hoes. So... I was like, he lying. And my mom, of course, she believed me. And she was like, da 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 and hung up the phone. So then, you know, Jamaicans, they talk too much. She had to go call, mm -mm -mm, and tell them about the story. And one of the persons that she called was my Haitian grandma, which is my father's mother. And this hurt me so much. But when my grandma heard about it, she was like, let me talk to the boy. Somehow, she's on the phone with this boy. I guess my mom gave her his number. And somehow my grandma is on the phone with his mother. And my grandma is Haitian and this boy is Haitian. So, you know, Haitians and Haitians, when they link, it's a party. Like, if you could speak Creole and you're a fellow Haitian, y'all automatically friends. Like, it's nothing. No weird vibes, no nothing. Y'all automatically friends. So my grandma calls me back after speaking with him like, hey, you're going to ruin this little boy's future. You need to go tell them people that you were lying. You probably led him on and all this stuff. And I'm just like, my heart dropped because this is my favorite grandma at the time. She bought me because she bought me whatever I wanted. She spoiled me and I was she had she had my father and his brother. So she never had her had a, a, a daughter so basically i was like her daughter and when she said this to me when i heard this i was just like in shock 
So I started feeling like she gaslighting me. I started feeling like, okay, maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm tripping. And it's so crazy. The boy mom or him done told my grandma like, oh, he's in football and how he got his big career. The whole time the boy stayed back a couple grades, grown as heck in a, in a in in my grade. And he was not no football or no sports. And yeah, he was just capping to get saved. When this happened, my grandma started talking to my mom. And I guess my mom started to believe like what my grandma was saying. And now my mom was like questioning me like, did he really do it? And I'm like, yes. And so then she starts going through my phone. And this is when she like Snapchat back then. You know, when Snapchat was that thing, your whole life is in Snapchat. We snapped everything back then. And she's going through my Snapchat. And baby, when I say I took a picture of everything, like I literally incriminated myself. She saw that I was around guns and sneaking out and hanging out with these boys. And that I lost my virginity. And that I was doing this and this and that. And she was so sad. She came to me crying like, you lost your virginity. And I was just like, yeah. Well, at first I was lying about it. And then I told her the truth. And she was just so sad. My dad heard about the situation where I almost got raped. This man did not call me. No, I no, I contacted him about it and he didn't say nothing. Like he had nothing to say. Like he was just he just ignored it. And I'm not gonna lie, at that time I was just like, dang, you know when you confide in your when you confide in your father about something like that, you expect them to be like, Where he at? Where that little boy at? And go hard for you, you know. So my father ain't really say much about that situation. I felt some type of way like that was the moment I felt like real betrayal and abandonment from my father because I'm like in a situation like this I know you haven't been here all my life but now I'm 14 years old and it's like it's like 14 years later you should be ready at this point to be a father why aren't you here for me during this time so my mom came to me um the next day or later on that night and she was like you should go to your aunt for Christmas this is around December and she was like you should go to New York for Christmas for two weeks and just get your mind off of all of this and just just take a breather. And I was just like, all right, bet. So I ended up going to New York. And when I got there, I was like, I never want to look back. I was running from my past. I was like, I never want to look back. I want to stay here and just live here. So those who follow me on Instagram for a while, this is when I was Jordan female. I went to New York. <laughs> And I was like, all right, I'm going to start over. It's my life, my new life. I changed my Instagram from Jordan Female to India Kayor. And I had a whole different identity. I had a whole identity switch. I was speaking like I was from Brooklyn. I was just thinking I was that girl. And I was not. So at my aunt, I left my mom's house, have my own room, my own bed, my own closet, everything, to live in my aunt house in her living room sleeping on a mattress and living out of a suitcase with a couple of clothes that I brought and this is by choice like I wanted to live there and obviously she didn't have space really um for me and I didn't want to like intrude in her son's room her her her, her sons had a big room but I didn't really want to be up in a room so I chose to sleep um in the living room on a mattress on the floor and I just started living a new life and I was just forgetting everything that I did and went through and I just had a whole new identity and I was at a whole new high school um while I was in New York I felt so depressed and sad um first of all they kept me back a grade in New York because I didn't take um it's a test you have to take as a student in New York I forgot what it's called. I forgot, but it's a state test that you have to take every year in order to go to the next grade. And obviously I never lived there before. So I have no record of me taking this test. So yeah, they kept me back a grade. So I had some, I think at this point I'm in 10th grade. Yeah, I'm in 10th grade. So I had some 10th grade classes and then some 9th grade classes. And it was such a hard, it was such a difficulty for me to get my, my credits transferred. like. They would not take the credits that I had from Florida. So me being in a younger grade, knowing how smart I am, like I have all honor classes, but I'm but I'm held back a grade. It just made, it just put me in a place where I was just very depressed. I just wanted to go back home and I was just tired of that. And living with my aunt, her sons didn't really like me. I don't know for what reason. Um, I just thought like boys are gonna be boys, but they didn't like me. 
and they didn't talk to me. I was the only girl in the house besides my aunt. And we would go to church every Sunday and do Bible studies every every night. And I just felt like I wasn't liked. Like we would be at Bible study with my aunt in her room and they would just be like doing all this when I would talk or say anything. Like they didn't like me. And eventually I started to feel like my aunt didn't like me. She, I'm not going to go too much into detail about, you know, anything. I'm not here to bash her. I forgive her. Um, she might, she might feel like she ain't do nothing to me, but me as a child, I felt like, well, I don't want to do, I don't want to say too much and tell family business. Like I want to get to the parts where it's strictly testimony to save a soul. So I remember my aunt, um, lying on me saying that the neighbor told her that I brought a boy to the house. And I'm like, girl, be for real. I sleep on the floor. Why would I bring any boy from my school to your crib so they can know that I sleep on the floor and go tell the whole school? I would never bring a boy to your house. So that's when I realized, like, oh, she don't want me here no more. Um, so eventually, I came back home. Um, I know God had me in New York for a reason. And I'm not going to go into details, but he had me there for a reason. And some stuff occurred that needed to happen to me in New York. And he saved me from what possibly could have happened in Broward during that time. Because, like I said, I was moving real fast. Like, I started picking up and started trying, doing different stuff. So I come back from New York and I'm back at my old school and that's crazy that is crazy how I left that school and came right back but yeah so I start back hanging out with the girl who I first smoked with everybody know this story fast forward we end up getting this bad car accident that went viral because I got in a car accident and as soon as I got out of the car I crawled out the car the first thing I did was get on Instagram everybody know that story did numbers <laughs> numbers um, I came out with a, a scar on my eye. My eye got busted open by something and I ended up getting stitches. It was, that was it. I came out perfectly fine. Um, that went viral. We ended up getting hella followers. I already had followers, but my stuff started going up. Like, I probably had like 13,000 in like only 11th or 10th grade. And yeah, that was the thing. Um, yeah. Oh, I need to follow, I need to follow the script. Let me go back. I'm sorry. So in New York, I knew of God before I went to New York. But I would just like pray before I eat. Barely. And like I just knew who I knew who God was. My mom would have us come to church sometimes. Like, you know, when she felt like that holy girl. She would have us go to church or whatnot. Um, but we didn't go often. Like it wasn't God wasn't like in my life, in my life for real. Um so going to when I moved to New York, God was implemented in my life because like I said, we was doing Bible studies every night with my aunt. Um, she went to church faithfully every Sunday and then she went to church on Wednesdays or Tuesdays and sometimes I would go with her. Like she was a Christian woman and I do this because some of her ways didn't give Christian. But then again, we can't judge because some of my ways, sometimes the things that I do, you would be like, how you how you got an attitude? Are you angry as a Christian? She, she was human so let me not let me take this back three incidents happened in new york um i'm only going to speak about two one of them being i went and bought an edible from this boy at school um and this sounds so crazy buying an edible from a child like i can't imagine like now that i'm 21 i can't imagine like a 16 year old making edibles have probably have no clue of what they doing and just selling them so i bought this edible and I ate the edible. It hit me as soon as I was about to walk inside the house. Because I used to take the bus from school. You know, in New York, everybody take the bus, barely walk. I mean, barely drive. And as soon as I got off the bus and was made it home, the edible hit me. And something was telling me, take off all your clothes and run. Run in the road. So I'm like, oh, I got laced. I, I done lost my mind. I thought I done lost my mind. So, I'm like, I'm getting tired of recording this. Mm, Lord, give me the patience. Lord, give me the endurance to finish this testimony. I know I should have ate something, but I know the Holy Spirit flowing. It was a bad experience with the edible. Um, when I went to school the next day, the boys who gave me the edible was like, ah, that's why we laced you. That's why you laced, that's why we laced you. That's why we laced you. And I'm just like, this can't be my life right now. Um, 
so that was a demonic encounter because I know that was not of God um that was that and then I remember doing something with one boy it was some popular boy at the school now that I look back he was not even all that and I ended up doing something with him and <laughs> this is so funny after he lived in the projects first of all I only know one route which is from home to school from school to home and in New York they got buses that go this way and then buses that go this way and I done went over there to follow that boy to the projects and after I done left to the projects I did not know how to get back home I'm calling him calling him call he's not picking up girl he like one and done baby I ain't got nothing to do with you and I'm not gonna lie that was my first time feeling like well not first time but one I was feeling very worthless in that in that in that situation at that moment I felt very worthless and I had to call the police to come pick me up and then call my aunt for the house address because I didn't know where we lived <laughs> and literally had to get dropped home by the police that day my aunt was like what's going on like what how did you get lost you take the same route every day but she didn't know what I heard being now that's the only time I was grown that was the only thing that she could have probably poss possibly spoke on but she didn't know about that um yeah so that was that um that's crazy so i come back from new york and i meet my first boyfriend ever. <laughs> i meet my first real boyfriend or whatever i was 16 at the time so i was in it was like 10th grade or 11th it was 11th grade and yeah i was 16 in 11th grade and i met this boy and he was a drug dealer so he sold weed and I remember that was the peak of my weed smoking journey like that's where it took off for real because when my friend back then introduced me it was just like all right whatever I'll do it when I get around them and I was a fiend for a little bit and then when I met him he smoked every day so I got with him and we would smoke every link yeah I used to be out of my mind so slowly but surely like I started staying over there first his mom was like no mm 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 she cannot come over here like I we used to be begging begging for me to come over there eventually she was just like whatever and it went from me like coming after school rarely to me coming every day and then started spending the night and then I was dang near living with this guy and it's so crazy because he lived five minutes from where I live so it was not like I was far from home but I was not home and I was booed up with this boy every single day, smoking weed, puffing down, puffing down, puffing the house down. And his mom let him smoke. So we was puffing the house down. So slowly but surely, he introduced me to other things like something called a bean, which I believe is ecstasy. It'd be like little characters like a Superman or a Scooby-Doo. And like he took half, I took half. And we was just went out in the world like, ah, SpongeBob and Patrick, dumb as hell. And I'm not gonna lie, it was such a good feeling. And I was just like, oh, I'm not seeing nothing wrong with this. And I'm like, it feels so good, you know. I love this. And like my third eye. And oh my gosh, like we really thought we were woke. Like we really thought we were really woke. Yeah, and then I remember trying Adderall to work on my business, saying that I can't focus. And and then the relationship started getting toxic. Like, I was getting tired of him. We would be laid up every single day to the point where we couldn't go nowhere without each other. Like, he went everywhere I went. I went everywhere he went. And like I said, the relationship was so toxic, he couldn't go nowhere without me. Like, I said that. You can go nowhere without me. And I remember just like us getting really physical. Like he would just get rough with me. Like he was insecure. He became insecure later on in the relationship. And he would just try to beat me up. Not no major beat me up. But he would like rough me up. Or like have his hands around my neck. And like push me against the wall. And do all this extra stuff. And that's when I was like. Okay his first time getting rough with me was. I remember one time some boy was calling his phone. And I act like I was going to pick it up. He shoved me. I was like, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm over here like, why he acting like that? 
it all come together in the end. And yeah, so like we would like get into like these little tussles. It wouldn't be major, major until our last time getting into a tussle. I had went to come see him in Tallahassee and okay, so let me backtrack. He ended up moving to Tallahassee for some opportunity. I guess they were selling um up there. He had some friends that was older than him and was selling them and they was recruiting people and they done chose them and told him to come up here because it's college town and this and this and that. So he moved up there and I was relieved, but I was also sad because I'm like, I know my man finna get stolen. Like I know he's gonna start cheating or whatever, but I was relieved because I was so tired of him, like I said. And I had just prayed a prayer like, Father God, I love this boy and I wanna break up with him, but I have no reason to really break up with him. So please break us up. Please give me a reason to break up with him. So he ended up moving to Tally and I ended up taking a whole, I'm 17 years old. Take a Uber from Broward to Fort Lauderdale Airport to get on a Greyhound way to Tallahassee. I get there. He's texting some girl in my face. I tell him, let me see the phone. He ended up was talking to some girl, being friendly. And I was just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to break up with him. I'm not going to get too much in detail. But that night, he ended up putting his hands on me, child. He ended up hitting me so hard, going like this to me so hard that my head, back of my head hit the window seal. Like the little seal on the window, the, the pointy part, and I blacked out. Like I thought I was going to die. I started screaming so loud. Ah! And the, the older people that they were staying with, that he was staying with, runs in the room with his shotgun. He thought so. I was screaming so loud that they thought that we were getting robbed. He runs in the room and he's like, oh, and there's walk go back to bed and i'm like ain't no way i'm screaming for help so i pack up all my stuff and i put it it was the next room next door that was empty and i bring all my stuff in there and i'm calling me a greyhound to go back home it haven't even been 24 hours yet and i'm already on the way back home and i was just like yeah i'm done with this boy i'm done and i got on the greyhound like two hours later and i took my behind back home um just crying my eyes out bawling my eyes out on the way home but i was just so ready to start my life over again um my life has been all about him um i did so much for that boy like i just felt like now i can really elevate because i feel like he was holding me back because i was take dang they take care of him like that was my first time getting like abused mentally and physically he said a lot of hurtful things to me like he would put my stuff out in the rain um and just be so mean to me and yeah after i broke up with him i started talking to other people and like i think i had like another face then because being with him i was loyal i ain't talked to men in so long like i didn't even look another man in their face that's how much i was locked in with him i don't even want him to feel like i wanted any other man so I started talking to other men. Okay, so yeah, I was 17 when I left him. We're gonna fast forward to when I was involved in a shootout at 18 years old. So on my 18th birthday, I went and got my hair done and I wanted to be outside, I ain't had no plans. So like I said, I used to be meeting guys off of Instagram. It was this dude, I think he was from Pompano and, or no, he was from Parkway. And I was just like, hey, you know what's up? It's my birthday, like I wanna be outside. Now. I didn't think the outside he was talking about was going to be... <laughs> we clearly wasn't talking about the same outside. So he picked me up. No, I drove to his house, parked my car, and I got in his car. And we were just riding around. You know how I be from Broward. Uh, let me think of a song. You know, let me, let me not even sing the song. But Kodak playing. You know, he got a mouthful of goals. He got them records. And he just, you know, riding around crazy. They stopping at green lights. Stopping up traffic. I don't know why Broward do that stupid thing. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. We'll stop at a green light and stop up the whole traffic. Even on the highway. The stupidest thing ever. And they would just pull over at gas stations. Everybody got their car. Everybody just going from stop to stop. Getting out of their car. You know. Calm down. I, I had got a bad feeling in my stomach about us riding. Like, I, first of all, I don't know you. I don't know who out to get you. I don't know who you got beef with. I just had a bad feeling. So I was like, can you drive back to my car? Cause like, this is boring. I, I'm not even having fun. And he was like, it's your birthday. Drink, take a shot. Like you lame vibing. Da, 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 da. I'm like, I want to go home. Drop me to my car. 
So he was like, all right, this is going to be the last stop. We pull up to this parking lot. I don't, it was not the flea market, but it was this big parking lot and everybody was there. As soon as he got out the car, I can't even do gunshots. Somebody was in the shoot. Somebody had beef with somebody and they finally seen him and they started sh having a shootout. When I tell you, I was like, oh, I'm finna die. I'm finna die. I went under the glove department and I'm just like, father, I don't even think I prayed for real, but I was just like, I don't want, I'm not ready to die. Like, come on. Like, this is so ghetto. I told him I wanted to go back to my car. He ends up getting back in the car and we drive off. I tell him, drop me to my car now. Now. Drop me to my car now. I never, well, I'm lying. The next day, I was going to say I never talked to him again after that. But the next day, he called my phone. This is when I stopped talking to him. He called my phone. He was showing me all the bullet holes on my side only. All above my head. If I was sitting up in that seat, I probably would have got shot. And it's so sad to say, a girl who was out there got caught in a fire and she got shot in her head. Y'all, she was light-skinned, very pretty, thick. I have some followers who know her. I've seen them post her. It happened on July 1st. I was 18 years old. So this, I'm 21 now, so you can do the math. And I, that's when I knew God had an angel over me. Like, God had an angel protecting me because I was supposed to die that night. And... From that day, I kind of slowed down, not really. And it's so crazy that I've been in another shootout after that. We're going to get there. I've been in another shootout after that. But that story, whenever I get in praise and worship and I start praising God and, you know, listen to gospel music, my mind always go back to that story of that night. Because I almost lost my life. Like, I was not supposed to be here. <laughs> like, I know God has a purpose for me. Like... It's so crazy. If y'all seen them bullets, it was all on my side, above my head, all like dang near to the the window on my side. And I was protected that night. And I thank God for saving my life that night because it could have been taken away. Hanging with some, I don't even know the boy name for real. And it could have been taken away just like that. My life could have been gone just like that. So that gave me chills just thinking about it, talking about it. It was so crazy. So that was one incident. It was the second incident where I almost lost my life. Because first was the accident. And then I went in, I got in that shootout. I done skipped the story. So this is before I was 18. Was it? I don't know if this is before I got with my ex or not, but this is another important story where God had an angel over me. Um, like I said, met some dude off of Instagram, and this I was so naive and stupid back then, y'all. Listen to this, you probably be like, girl, even I know not to do that. But he DM'd me like a stack of money. And I don't know what it was, but me, I used to be so money hungry back then. Like, not to the point where I would snake my friend, but to the point where like I was willing to take risks to get that bread. And he sent me like a stack of money like you can get this like what's up and i'm like okay come get me <laughs> and i had linked up with this dude he, i don't know how old he was but i know he was older than me and i got in his car and i'm just like where the money at and he like looking around it's nighttime i had to sneak out of the house to get hang out with this dude and he's just looking around looking around and i'm like what's wrong with you he was like my parents just died so like and this is probably a whole lie he was like so i'm just like very paranoid and i'm just like okay where's the money and he getting real aggressive with me like upset that i'm asking where's the money that he showed me so i'm just like there trying to make conversation you know asking about his life i look a little bit in the back seat and there's duct tape on the back seat and i'm like I'm in my head like, okay, maybe I'm tripping. But just being dumb, I'm like, is he going to kidnap me? 